Addicted brain. What is the effect drugs cause in my brain? Is it possible to get addicted to the internet? Why does an addiction arise? What we mean by addiction to something is really nothing else but learning with a benefit that turns pathological and ends up ruining the life project of the affected person and causing problems to those around him or her. Chronic use of drugs, alcohol, tobacco, or behaviors leading to addictive gambling or identity theft on the Internet appropriate the reward circuitry, produce a conditioning, and they affect not only the performance, but also brain structure. When comparing a normal brain and an addicted brain, in this case due to cocaine, a decrease in activity of different brain areas from front to back is observed. Risk and adventure, curiosity about the unknown, generate an innate pleasure, more or less according to the temperament of the person. Situations involving danger cause an increase in dopamine, a neurotransmitter that processes positive emotion states. In a pleasant situation, neurons of the nucleus accumbens, or NAC, receive dopamine, while the amygdala evaluates the expected reward. The prefrontal cortex processes information, weighs and compares options, and decides freely the answer, finally acting in one way or another. Normally, dopamine remains in the area of the synapse between two neurons in the NAC. The same neurons that release dopamine recapture it again. Also in this region are interneurons that discharge the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA and controls the dose of dopamine release. This allows our brain to maintain a balance, and so not allowing us to become apathetic or elated without any reason. All drugs upset the balance of dopamine, either by increasing its concentration in the synapse space or prolonging the time that remains before being captured. Cocaine, for example, blocks the reuptake of dopamine, causing it to stay longer in the space between synapses, prolonging the pleasurable effect. Amphetamine, another psychostimulant, as well as preventing dopamine recapture, allows an increase in the amount of dopamine released again, so that its concentration increases very rapidly. On the other hand, nicotine directly stimulates dopamine-producing neurons. In contrast, opiates, such as cannabis and morphine, prevented the release of dopamine inhibitor GABA. In the case of ecstasy, its consumption literally destroys brain cells, breaking them into pieces called apoptotic bodies. Chronic use of cocaine, alcohol, or opioids decrease dopamine receptors, which remain at low levels even after a year of leaving consumption. Thus gradually decrease the pleasurable effects of drugs and create the need for greater amounts to achieve the same effect. This explains the compulsiveness associated with the abstinence syndrome. Addiction does not develop right after a first use. It is the consequence of a long process of consolidation of a learning process. Memorizing is increasing the strength of connections between neurons. When a neuron receives information, it releases the neurotransmitter glutamate, and other neuron receptors eject magnesium ions, allowing the entry of calcium ions into the neuron. These ions trigger a cascade of reactions that strengthen the connection between them. With chronic use of the drug, the process is modified, since overstimulation produced by dopamine increases glutamate receptors. This causes an intense internalization of calcium and long-term memory remembrance is established. Hippocampus stores memory-rewarding stimulus. Memory is kept in a more intense and lasting way. The more pleasant is the stimulus providing emotional memory, essential in addiction. At the start of drug use or learning a game, the person involved unconsciously learns the environmental circumstances surrounding the situation. In this way, the reward is associated with something, such as a smell, a place. Learning the steps to achieve the objective as something pleasant creates the procedural memory, and that requires the thalamus, cerebellum, and caudate nucleus. It's the same type of memory that allowed us, for example, to learn to ride a bike and remember the movements quickly, 
retrieving them from our memory after years of not doing so. Perceiving that smell again, or seeing the place where the day was spent consuming drug, dopamine promotes unconscious memory associated with reward and gets the information necessary to achieve the award. In a normal situation, the orbitofrontal cortex would select the response after analyzing the data. However, when addiction has occurred, the operation is different. The control over the frontal lobe circuits is lost and the automatic and compulsive responses are generated. Then neurons of the substantia nigra send dopamine to the dorsal striatum and the parietal lobe without going through the prefrontal control. Thus, addiction sufferers do not decide but are forced to consume. But if playing and communicating are genuinely human activities, why can they become pathological? Choosing an identity in the virtual world has a reward like money in the game. The emotional state of the player is altered, and that may end up creating an obligation to play, addiction. Most addictive behaviors have their roots in adolescence, since at that time reward systems and the emotional memory are not yet adjusted. Girls are even more vulnerable than boys due to differences in the amygdala, a region critical for social, cognitive, emotional, and behavioral regulation. Brain abnormalities are not solved only with willpower. However, prevention, self-commitment to limit their own field of action to protect against carelessness, is able to slow the pleasant momentum. An elective course called Happiness, directed by Ernst Fritz Schubert at the Willy Helpach Institute of Heidelberg, shows that the taste for living and personality development can be taught. With a sense of life permitting an analysis of problems and mastering them, you can experience stress as a positive stimulus to live both personally and in harmony with others. Students of that elective course called Happiness admit to having stopped smoking compulsively or consuming hashish. The conviction of having one's identity in your own hands to overcome a crisis and not feeling alone are a good prevention to avoid falling into the destructive web of dependencies and addictions.